much live. Or too much live. Yes. That was way better than last That's week. That's crunchy, man. That is a good <laughs> one. Crunchy. All right. Hey, guys. Talks Too Much Third Party Studios. I am here with my co-host. We got Slim. Yo. And we got the Cody. <laughs> <laughs> What was that? I don't know. <laughs> that was new. Some <laughs> fat Albert shit. <laughs> <laughs> well, today we're going to be talking. Uh, we have a few things we want to talk about, but we're going to launch into talking about reboots today. We saw some news over the weekend that got our brains kind of turning on some of this stuff a little bit. And, you know, one one movie that none of us really, I think, expected to see as, you know, a reboot or a kind of a restart to a franchise we didn't expect to see a sequel of Gladiator. Nope. So, quick question, because I didn't even know this was coming out. Is it roughly any of the same characters, or is it just a brand name to sell it? Or The, the answer to your question is just no. <laughs> <laughs> all no. of it. The, uh, it doesn't need to exist at all. As a sequel, prequel, spinoff, <clears throat> no. The only... The only good faith thing to go into this film is that Denzel Washington is currently among its its uh, top bill cast. Yeah, but he's old as shit, so it's not like he's going to be like the badass dude in the arena. No, he's going to be. He'd be like a teacher, right, or an he'll instructor. Be a, he'll be a slave owner, which will make a lot of sense. Of course, dude, that would be hilarious. I would. I would be all all. Take on board that, woke Hollywood. <laughs> yeah, that'd be fantastic if Denzel Washington owned just an army of white slaves. That'd be funny as hell. <laughs> no, it good. doesn't need to be remade. At all. No, it, it really doesn't. So, I mean, like, also... One First thing, film's perfect. It is. And it's an isolated story. The Emperor's been dethroned. The main character is, spoiler alert, 30 years later. Yeah. The main character dies in the, in the movie. And... Oh, it's 23 years later. Yeah. But, I mean, there's the, the story of Gladiator, it's done. It was told. It's, it's over. And yeah. it was a good story. It's not like, oh, that was so bad. Let's ignore it for 20 years and make a good movie now. I just had a thought. Do you think this is because of the success, the success of uh, Top Gun Maverick? Oh. That was a 40-year-old mm. fucking reboot. Slash an, it might be riding on that high. It's an interesting thought. The thing about it is that Ridley Scott really hasn't been making any game-busting movies recently like in the last five to ten years i don't know of like one a really big ridley scott film and i'm a huge fan of his work like i look back to alien i look back to other movies i mean the movie we're going to be talking about later uh, yeah i mean we talked about this last week that uh we like a lot of his work but it's more missed than hit these days exactly Mm -hmm. so i mean what i mean what do we want from this what do are they right i don't want shit from this (laughs) <laughs> well, are they riding the highs of Maverick? I think is a really good question, actually. Because yeah, no, that just popped in my head. Well, and I mean, I didn't watch the Oscars, did uh, or the uh, whatever award ceremonies are, but did it win anything? Because it was nominated, right? And people it were had to have won yeah, some no, stuff. Yeah, no, it didn't win anything though. The only thing oh, I know didn't? that won okay. was uh, Short Round, won an Oscar. Uh, okay. The kid, the Asian kid from uh, Raiders of the Lost, Lost Ark. Right. One for everything, everywhere, all at once. Did I actually get that title right? I think yeah. so. And yeah, good, uh, good on and, you. Good job. And <laughs> you the did boy, the thing. Brendan Fraser won an Oscar. Best oh, actor. Yeah. for the whale. For the whale, right? Which I'll never watch. I, no, I, I, I like him as an actor. But. He's been fucked around too much. Brendan Fraser has not been in. I mean, the Mummy franchise is the most memorable. Oh, they're thing so good though. Was he in? Uh, was he the male lead in? Uh, or the male. Best supporting male actor in Mighty Joe Young. Do you remember that movie when we were coming up? Oh no. fuck, that was around the same time as Tarzan came out. Yeah, though. or so, not George of the Jungle. Mm, I mean, yeah. Oh, I was like, say, what does Tarzan have anything to do with they it? They all fucking mixed together. I get, I get what you're getting at now. Your point, your point. Brendan Fraser has been fucked around. Yeah, I think Brendan Fraser was due to get some, some He's, kind of an accolade. I wish it was happened earlier in his career because honestly, I want nothing from Brendan Fraser right now. He's not in. He's not in or going to be in anything. I'm probably fir- gonna have. He was the first male actor to be like, <clears throat> "Yeah, I've been Me Too too," and it fucked his career up. Oh, I believe that. But that was way back in the day. Well, you have someone who's like. Well, the movie he won the war- award for is Whale. Yeah. Which, then do you get you hear the lash or the backlash from Whale? Fat phobic. Or the, yeah. The fat community. Yeah, the fat the fat community. This is comedy. You should have hired a six hundred pound person instead of an actor. <laughs> Did you hear this? this no, I didn't hear any of that. It's so like, the fucking Brendan Fraser is getting ridiculed for because there. So there's 
criticism that the award went to is someone who was wearing a fat suit rather than someone who actually was an obese person. And the, the backlash was something to the effect of, when are we going to stop giving awards to fat suits? As if Brendan Fraser didn't act his ass off. Yeah. I mean, when you're not an obese whale and you have to pretend to be an obese whale and you do a good job yeah. being an obese whale, I feel like you've earned the you've award earned, for pretending yeah. to be an <laughs> obese whale. Yeah. Oh, they're actors. It's called acting. Act as someone else? Yeah. That's surprising. Yeah. It would almost be. <laughs> well, Scarlett Johansson had that uh, uh, movie canceled to where she was supposed to be, play like some sort of tranny. I don't know which way. I, I know go, what you're talking about. But, but yeah, there I don't remember like, the movie. But why don't you just hire a fucking tranny? Because then no one would go see it. It's like, okay, maybe we, some people. Yeah, would exactly. That was, that's, Scarlett that's harsh, Johansson but. has star power. <clears throat> so if you want to have your movie gain legs, you hire a fucking star. With great legs. Yeah. Damn right. Yeah. No. Mm. I don't think anyone is going to. Like, award for best ass goes to me. Oh, uh, I was going to say me. <laughs> never you. Couldn't be you. That's why not? I, could, I don't know. I wouldn't know. Um, <laughs> but as far <laughs> as... far as Okay. It, so none of us... Slim, do you do you want this movie? What did you think of the first one? I really liked the first one. It was really good. So I... Like I said, I don't, we're... I don't know if it's like complete starting over. I don't know if it's an independent story. Because like you said, the first one's over and done with. So how, where do you come with that? Is Are they going to do that thing we talked about a couple weeks ago oh is it their kids like where where do you go with oh, this yeah, yeah. i remember <laughs> you saying that i was like i laughed i was like that's so true it's well, number two well, it's their children his, his kid's fucking dead yeah well so, so i don't know you're going over this. by goddamn horse well yeah. ridley scott is directing but apparently the writer for this david scar uh scarpa i mean scarbutt scarpa he's known for things <laughs> like the day the earth stood still oh okay that <laughs> oh it's we're it's hosed. all right <laughs> It's what? all right. The day the earth stood still? Yes, I'll say it's all right. In I what context? It. Just it's, because Keanu's in it? No, it's all right. And uh, Jennifer Conaway. What redeeming qualities does the day the earth stood still have? I don't know. It's not, like, horrible. It was in a weird time in the, like, uh, late 2000s, early 2010s where movies were just kind of like... Me. We don't really know what we want to <clears throat> do or anything, so they're like all middling, but there's some dumb fun out there, like knowing it, is it dumb is fun dumb fun. Movies. I agree with you. Yeah, they got a five point five. I mean, it's not great, but I agree with you. It was dumb fun. There's some movies out there. I if can't you could tell just, you. I'll watch it ever again. You, but. Well, but yeah, but there's some movies out there you could just let's just shut our brain off, watch it, and have a good time with it. I think that's one of them. Okay, I'll. Maybe I am being overly harsh on this movie. I don't think I am, but let's say for the point of argument that I am. The the other movies in this catalog aren't anything anyone will, will know or recognize either. I mean, his most recent stuff is he was a writer on a show. Um, <sighs> the Man shit. in the High Castle. That's oh, a show. Oh, that's actually a good show. Yeah? It's not rated Ah, uh, Nazis win the war. 7.9 take over pretty good. half the United States. They split it with Japan. And it's kind of... Yeah. What, what did you I only say, watched Slim? Most There's seven point nine. That's not too bad. I mean, it's not. Well, the series as a whole, yeah. I only he, watched most of the first season. I get he's only accredited for three episodes, though. So that's weird. Uh, yeah, and they're all in season four. There's this weird trend where uh, movie studios are hiring uh, TV show writers to write their scripts. Yeah, as a if, lot of coming off uh, Rick and Morty and Marvel is a big crossover all of a sudden. Oh yeah, yeah. That's uh, that's an interesting thing too. But the um, what would it? Okay, so none of us want Gladiator two. Uh, I mean, ma- what would it take for this movie to be successful? What would what would you? So I'm trying to be careful in how I say this. None of us were looking forward to a Gladiator two film. But if it was to be a good film, what would you need it to have? It would have to be like a Spartacus kind of thing. Yeah. Nobody. <sighs> Okay, I won't say nobody. I'll talk for everyone. Um, <laughs> they, this is my problem with uh, the films, and I've said this to you earlier today, Jim, is that uh, you have so much Roman history, and it takes place over, like, basically, any movie that comes out basically takes place over two decades. It's either the... Uh, Fight, fighting with uh, Britannia, the yep, Brits. The Britons. Yep. Or it takes place with the Colosseum, which is Colosseum is 
way after a lot of shit ever happened with uh, the start of the Empire. Mm -hmm. Because, I mean, it was a republic for like a thousand years before it was even a fucking empire. Yep. So you got like hundreds of years of history and we just do these two things over and over it's because it's again. most iconic i mean people are gonna see all oh, the coliseum that's familiar i don't well, give a shit about iconic well let me let me jump into this though i want to see fucking carthage fight or <laughs> well was the movie 300 so the battle of uh, this, oh, this elite oh yeah uh, am i yep. saying what? that right no i don't know if you're saying it right but it's, there we go thank you sorry i i, Jeez, I, I asked if i was pronouncing it right son Good god it was dumb. only two thousand five hundred mm. years ago how do you yeah. not remember but i'm just saying how many how many versions of that story were mainstream before the movie came out right <laughs> oh yeah it's not like totally accurate or anything right right right. but i'm just saying that wasn't there were thousands of other greeks with the 300 spartans no i know but that story is mainstream i believe in big part due to the movie well, you could do. Uh... People know some people know their history. Some people know of that fight, but in before the movie came out, I, it wasn't mainstream. It definitely Probably was not. not. No it way. It was not re got... referenced in pop culture. Yeah, There's no, no way. You could do like fifty years <clears throat> later, the Peloponnesian War. Yeah. Between Athens and Sparta. Yeah. So that's that's my point. Is I'm saying that like the main movie is when when you have all this history and you have these significant events, you can make a whole movie of a single significant event if you do. But it's the just done well. over and over and over again. Yeah, you need yeah. So you need new stories from those eras of time. You need different. Uh, I mean, before that, you got no. Uh, never mind. Uh, uh, Alexander the Great was uh, after three hundred. Yeah, I would. Well, it seems like with the like the Woman King, it seems like any new historical movies that come out, and there's plenty of ones I've missed. The last do or the last duel. Is that, uh, is that the title of that movie that came Another out? Another Ridley Scott movie. And then you had uh, The Northman. Great. And then you had... Yes, that the, was very good. Then you had The Woman King. Now That was another Hamlet story. Like so, uh, <clears throat> Lion King and shit. Yeah. The, well, The Woman King was apparently historically... Inaccurate. Yeah. I think they were. there was a lot of people saying it was even more egregious than just inaccurate. It was almost Made purposefully up. manipulated, like telling of history to favor... Like very specific groups of people, but um, <laughs> yeah. So I mean, it doesn't seem like uh, it's even historical fiction anymore. It seems like it's historical fantasy. And now tell me, the last duel, the the last duel, the Northmen are both movies that I really want to see. But is you are they historical fic? I meant to. I own both on disc upstairs that I want to be watching right now. Physical media. You're old school. Physical media is the best way to enjoy media. That's not true. It it's not the most. It is the best way to enjoy it. It's not the most convenient. That's the different, my hands different thing. On it. Exactly. Well, if your Wi-Fi goes out, you can go read a fucking book. Yeah, I will be exactly. enjoying my disc. <laughs> I will read a fucking book. You read a book. <laughs> but I want to ask you: Are the Northmen, The Last Duel, are those movies historical fiction or historical? No, fantasy? they're based. They're based off of uh, historical events, but they're fictionalized. Correct. It's, it's uh, fictional history. Okay. Yeah. Like, I watched uh, the Northmen. I never the watched last the duel, Last Duel. The Last Duel is probably, or not the Last Duel. I I never even finished that movie. Uh, the Northman. The Northman's yeah. based off of, uh, <clears throat> I can't remember any of their goddamn names, but it's based off of a real tale. It's just done in a hyper-stylistic, I wouldn't say hyper-stylistic. One of the reviews I heard in. was, uh, Campy. The movie was Campy. That was, a uh, 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 what does that even mean? I don't know, cheesy? You're cheesy. Campy. Well, I, I haven't seen it. This is just... <laughs> I'm but no, it's a, it's a, it's a, <laughs> yeah, The Lion King, uh, which is based off of uh, Shakespeare's um, play, Hamlet. Yes, yeah. thank you. Hamlet two. Well, you actually knew Hamlet. that shit. <laughs> the, if I post in the chat if you've seen Hamlet two and your favorite line from that film. God, we quoted this way back in the day so I, many times. Whoa. What the fuck was it? I love Hamlet two. <laughs> <laughs> we can't say it on here. Why not? I feel like I've been arred in the face. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> I love Hamlet 2. Like in the face. Hamlet 2 is 
uh, ha- oh my gosh. If we come to favorite comedy, it's going to be between two movies for me, and I can't believe I slept on Hamlet. I have my number one, and none of you are going to take it. We've already talked about it multiple times on this show. I've already forgotten. It should be easy for me to beat it, though. I, I don't think I'll have a chance. Yeah. I don't think I'll have trouble. <laughs> but then I'll just look back and be like, oh, that was a good one. That one was also a good one. Well, fuck me. <clears throat> yeah. You know what? Um, yeah. You know what other movie I guess uh, from this from the era that like Gladiator came out was uh, Cinderella Man. Um, there's a boxing movie. I mean, okay. Oh, yep. Not even close to what Gladiator is. So. Well, I mean, every boxing and we said this the Wasn't other week with also, Creed, but uh, like what's Russell Crowe. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Well, with another thing about well, Russell Crowe had this like era of success. It seemed like yep. all the best movies that came out were his. Um, Badass dude. Yeah, he was doing things for doing things well, and then uh, South Park uh, had that episode the where they fighting, had Russell, Co- uh, Russell, Russell traveling Crow. the world and fighting people fighting on his tugboat. <laughs> 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 yeah, South Park is fantastic. But um, the point I was making about Cinderella Man. Thank is, God for South Park. Otherwise, I'd never realized that I'd never had to talk to anyone, anyone, anyone in my life. I could just use Chat GPT. <laughs> <laughs> ChatGPT is going to be interesting to talk about someday. I don't know what we'll have to say on it. None of us have played with it. No, I don't have to say anything. I'll just fucking... You'll just have it oh, type I, your... Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you'll, write, you'll have it write a script for all It's going to be my script for the next couple episodes. <laughs> this is why we don't do, like... This is why we don't do it ver- via Zoom or anything like that, or Teams or anything, is because... The Cody will just be using Chat GPT, <laughs> and Taylor, Taylor and I will both just be sitting there chatting with them, and we'll be like, "Wow, your contributions became so much more profound." This is, this is enlightening. <laughs> you changed like, my life. Weirdly nicer. <laughs> oh my god! Ew, uh, you're complimenting us. Stop it. Who are you? No, I understand where you're coming from, but it makes I don't a want lot understanding. I want debate. I want argument. I want. I want critical thinking. I don't want understanding. I want critical thinking. But the um the with Russell other Russell Crowe movies um I guess I'm hoping that a lot of movies from that era just do not get reboots or or even speaking like speaking of another Russell Crowe Ridley Scott movie um, Robin Hood yes director's cut yep. once again every every Ridley Scott movie should come with an asterisk director's cut because that's the yep. best movie how did you feel about it do you like it <clears throat> uh, I love it Slim did you see it no. Okay, well, let me... He only this. watches superhero movies. That's not That's true. Not true. <laughs> That's not true. Um, what did I think of Robin Hood? Um, I had an earworm in my brain man. for, Our like, tight, four tight weeks. Tights. of So, just Robin Hood, Russell Crowe, it's just Robin Hood. Um, it's, a, it's a more... Grounded, realistic... Yeah, that's... That, you get there... Yeah. Oscar Isaac is just a... Bad shit and saying bad guy. <laughs> yeah, but the um, the when I watched Robin Hood recently because I watched it in the last few months. Um, uh, again, it's uh, I had an earworm in my brain and I moved a song up to the top of my playlist. It was a sea shanty, uh, from when they're sailing back to England in that movie. And what the fuck is that? Uh, is that the one you've been singing for so goddamn long? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I was very honest about like it being in my head. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, so this motherfucker had- just walks in the door singing a sea shanty <laughs> <laughs> just randomly. <laughs> I do actually like, I do hum and sing a lot of songs, but, um, the movie itself actually stands up really well. That is going to be a movie that people will be it able to watch. It was in- supposed to be a trilogy, but it flopped. Well, Which yeah. I am sad about. I don't know if I'm sad. I think it's I better like it. as an isolated story anyway. As I mean, the tale of it Robin Hood could be an isolated story. Well, it's a tale of Robin Hood getting start like kind of starting off. Start. It's not his like inde- adventures. It's a superhero stuff like that. origin story. Are we gonna do yeah. the Robin verse? The Robin verse. But, Why the fuck not? But straight. But Can straight. we have a historical <laughs> era like a historical verse? Sure. What? A historical it's just verse. history. It's just, it's just history so, movies. So eventually together. someone's going to be like, I think this is just history. <laughs> that, <laughs> we got characters from like 300 BC meeting up with characters <laughs> in 1280. What a wild Who are you guys? Movie. Guardians of the Galaxy. <laughs> yeah, fucking Gerard Butler's Leonidas just kicking the shit out of uh, Russell, Crowe's, Russell Crowe's Robin Hood. He travels to America. Yeah. <laughs> this is America. Kick. <laughs> the, um, 
Robin Hood itself was actually really good, though. I, I as a movie, as a standalone movie, the director's cut really does does hold up. It's a movie that I think people in twenty years are going to be able to watch and actually really enjoy. Which is a little bit of foreshadowing that we're going to talk about later. Yeah, with Ridley Scott, director's cut. Yeah. We gotta be. We gotta expand on like direct on um, his contributions through director's cuts. Do you guys think the movie industry would be more successful if they were, uh, if the they movies stopped uh, doing theatrical cuts? They, yeah, they stopped putting their grimy fingers into uh, creatives' fucking vision. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Twenty percent of the Mona the Lisa. director's cut of every movie <laughs> yeah, right. is always better. Like uh, I have this <clears throat> random one, Babylon A.D. With uh, mm. Vin Diesel. I haven't seen it, but I mean, I trust Vin Diesel's quality. Theatrical film. was shit. The edit was do- it was garbage. Mm-hmm. Uh, the director's cut comes out and it just switches a few events around in the movie and makes it so much coherent and uh, more l- focused and linear. It just works so much better. Well, I, I I guess I'd like to get your two cents on this, Slim, as a uh, as a f- in a f- hypothetical future. Where there are just director cut films, like full feature length films of like two and a half hours, three hours long, um, would you pay more money to enjoy that experience, or do you think there's people out there who will just turn off from going to the theaters entirely? I think it would turn some people away because they're like, oh, no, like some movies are already long movie. enough, yeah, and it's like, oh, this is a three and a half hour movie. Granted, we went to Avatar. How many people went to that movie? That movie so was many. long. A lot. So, so, many. so actually maybe saying that out loud, maybe I take that back. People would go to it if it was a good movie. They saw it was from you know a certain director that they liked and they knew it was their full vision. Well, I don't think it would per- pe- turn people away. This is why I, I, miss, I, think I miss the age of epics, though. Like in the late 90s, early 2000s, we had a lot of epics. Yeah. That were historical films, like three hours and plus long. Yep. It's like, this is a... Uh, a common argument with like movies should be like two hours long and that's it and get it, get in get out get yep. in get off get out. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I disagree. The like most of my favorite movies are two twenty plus hours. Mm-hmm. All of the, I think all of the best movies are movies that take the time and just do it correctly. Yeah. And I think that's. I don't know how um, Zack Snyder's cut of the Justice League movie performed. I heard it did. Ah, uh, excellent! So much better. Well, I mean, I heard the movie. Everyone loved it. The movie is better, but did it did it make? I more? think it was the number one thing on HBO for. A I, I think so too. Yeah. So it definitely. I mean, it definitely did. So it sounds like it did Plus well. It was I cut, know, cut into four parts because, <clears throat> yeah. like, it had like every forty minutes or whatever was like part a part, one, part two, part yep. three. So you think, just like pause it. I think that's if it performed really well, like you guys say it did. Then I think that that should really be every studio's goal is to be perform making these long, significant epics that are really that that tell a great story. Take the time and tell a great story. Just take your time. You have all well, the time like, in the world. It's like uh, Dune. Which Dune Part 2 is coming out this year. I am so excited <laughs> for that. I said I never got excited for anything a couple of episodes ago. I'm actually really excited, excited about that. Huh? I can't <laughs> wait. Did you see it, Slim? Um, yeah, I saw that one. It was really good. I Because uh, David, David Lynch back in the <clears throat> 80s did a Dune. They covered the entire first book in one movie, and it was a, a shit show. Like, production was a shit show. The fucking... Everything was about it was a shit show. So having a... You could do this, yeah. Speaking of long movies and whatnot, you could have it broken up into two parts, like Dune is. Because Dune 1... Dune Part 1 is 2 hours 20-something? Mm-hmm. It was about that, yeah. It's a long movie. But yeah, no, it's... You could... I don't even know where the fuck I was going with you this. You almost one. well, I mean, one while you find your well, find your place again on that. Uh, one thing that's worth considering when you're looking at it from a theater perspective is you almost don't get your money your money's worth anymore for an hour and forty five minute movie hour. No, not really. Movie. I mean, unless you go on a a night mm-hmm. where there's a deal like in our town on Tuesday or whatever night it is. Yep. It's like yep. half off or something. That night you have. Uh, yeah, that's when me and the fiance go is during usually Tuesdays or whatever the deal is. 
I here's here's my two cents on movies. I will spend money to see a good film. If I get the most out of it, I will spend money. I've always be, I've always said this on the channel. Rome will always have gladiators. The theaters must stand. We need this level of entertainment in our culture, and we need good cinema. And we need if we need to jack the prices up and do and get creative with how we do it. I'm on board with that. But they we can't jack just, the prices up. Well, they've I mean they've increased like, the prices. Uh, yeah, you you look at uh, the box office of Avatar One and Avatar Two. There's a uh, what eleven year, twelve year difference between the two. Something like that. Yeah, 2007. I thought so. Right. Was it 2007? No, 2009 no, was the first one. I was just saying it was oh, later than that. Okay. 2009. Anyway, uh, tickets were a lot cheaper. Yep. So I made such and such money. Uh, cut to 2021? Two. Two? 2022. Two? It was this, it was this uh, few months ago. Right. It all blends together. Who it does, knows? doesn't it? <laughs> Life, am I right? Tickets but. are almost twice as much as they were back then. And still made less than the first one. So less people saw Avatar 2 than they did Avatar 1 in theaters. I don't think that's indicative. Uh, I don't think people are leaving theaters. I don't think people are leaving theaters because of the price. I think people are leaving theaters because of the quality of selection. That and streaming. And streaming. And streaming. I, I was, was going to add streaming. We don't have to. So many people are going to be like, well, that's going to come out on this whatever platform. I'm not saying Avatar did, but you for sure Disney movies. Yep. Right. Like, oh, why, why would I go in there to watch Star Wars episode whatever when I know it's going to come out in well, three no months? Well, no one's watching Star Wars anymore. Three months for, you know, that's what I did with that. Uh, I didn't even watch it, but um, their last one. Rise of Skywalker? Yeah. You watched that, train wreck? I watched all three of them. Yeah, I had to, fin- I saw, I had to I finish. I had to finish. I watched the first one. I didn't, well, the, technically the seventh one, and it wasn't horrible. And then the eighth and ninth. I wish I never saw. <laughs> See, we went to the seventh in theaters. I did. You, yep. I you did and too. Me, Jimmy. Yep. I went to the seventh in theaters. Theaters too. Yep. And I was like, "Yeah, it's dumb fun." You hated it. I was so. I Jeez, felt, I hope you didn't see set. I hope you didn't see eight. You then. didn't see the rest of them. Good. I uh, you I went was, right there. <laughs> I was smart. so angry at what they had done. Yeah. And the level of justification and, like, like pure joy they felt from causing that train wreck and making that disgusting mm-hmm. abomination of a film it was terrible the, well. ma- the fact they were patting themselves on the back so hard then you had both of the star wars battlefront game abominations that came out right after yeah they were turned good. out to be good it but how long did that take a long fucking time there you, yeah so it's like did okay did it did you not to derail you but in that second game did did you think it was good right away or after years of them updating stuff after yeah. See, I haven't played it for like five years, so I don't know or whatever. EA, you know. it EA was took afterwards. EA took one of the greatest game sets. Yeah. Which was Star Wars Battlefront. How do you Star mess Wars that up? Battlefront Two, and they took that namesake and put it into their garbage, trashy multiplayer only yeah. skin wearing. Loot yeah. box running, loot box. gambling machine of a yeah. piece of trash media. Yeah, yeah, no, there were countries suing EA because of the, loot gam- box the system. gambling practice. Whatever. It was gambling. 100%. All fa- oh, sorry, go ahead. No, it was one hundred percent gambling. They like, they the like loot boxes, yeah. proved it. It was like like scientists like proved like that stimulated the part of the brain of basically like that gambling machine that would flip, 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 flip. You yeah, know, and you like, got a shitload of. Uh, that's how you pe- upgraded oh, your guys. Oh, people with like th- tens of thousand dollars in debt because yeah. their kid accidentally got yeah. It. yeah not accidentally but got a hold of their and card it's, and it's like and it's like buy 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 yeah. buy and it's like wasn't even small upgrades. I remember it like was like midget trade percentage. brokers on the floor. <laughs> per- <laughs> 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 buy stocks and EA loot box. Buy, buy, buy. Buy waffles. Waffles. Open, <laughs> open, open. <laughs> oh, I love these boxes. Oh, my God. Uh, Pink Darth Vader. Woo. Yeah. <laughs> I'm glad they didn't add that shit. I, um, but. It got better. The, the point <laughs> I'm making <laughs> with, um, e- EA deserves whatever negative publicity, negative reviewing, the whatever lost revenue, whatever fans of their content leave, they deserve all of that and more. They are but, horrible. In, they are horrible to this industry, and they, they have ruined gaming for so many franchises. They and did. Star Wars was 
What's that? Well, sp- uh, no, no. Uh, I was going off of yours. They yeah. Ruin, they ruin so many franchises yeah. and whatnot, especially in sports. All sports gaming. Oh, my goodness. It's like you could buy so uh, bad. an NFL game from 10 years ago, and it'll play the exact same exactly. as today. And it's actually fun back then. <laughs> but they did make one good gaming choice when it comes to Star Wars. Yeah. Uh, I'm Fall, skeptical. Fall in but- Order. Okay, yeah. That was okay. a really good game. Well, in Fallen Order, my understanding of that game is I'm it's more narratively driven. I'm actually excited for the second one. So am I. I'm excited yeah, for the second one, too. It's also a Souls light. Yeah. Basically. It plays like a Souls game, but it's significantly easier. Well, because f- Fox Souls games. Those, well, g- those games are too like tough em. for me. I suck at them. No, I was going to say they're too tough for me. Well, what about like The Force Unleashed? Those were good games. I, er, I enjoyed yeah, those. They were yeah. good. Yeah, back in the day. My older brother really liked those that games. That was right around the time of uh, the height of Star Wars 2. Yeah. The heights of Star Wars to the new generation mm-hmm. to where it was mm-hmm. like uh, Revenge of the Sith came out, which we saw on opening night, which was dope. I remember that. I, I have. I like that movie a it, lot. Getting back That's to my the, favorite Star Wars. Getting back Mine to the too, Star probably. Wars movies, The um, I did see Seven. I was so angry at what they had done. I... I will never forgive them for what they've I'm done I'm pretty sure I, pa- I was watching Star Wars 8, which would have been the last of the... The Last Jedi. The Last Jedi. Which was... Which I was watching in Is my that the room. one with the racetrack? Mm, like that 30-minute gambling, race, thing, gambling the racetrack? Planet? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm pretty the, sure like, I paused... horse racing one or whatever. I'm pretty yeah. sure I paused every I 20 minutes. I racing, and I was like, no. no, it's not pod racing, but you're right, yeah. I'm pretty sure I paused every 20 minutes. And just burst out of my room and uh, ranted about <laughs> about yes. it to Jimmy. I, I like, remember that. Uh, see this shit? Uh, and I told you I was never going I'm to turn that gonna. on. <laughs> I have seen I have seen the entirety of Number Eight, The Last Jedi. I've seen the entirety of that film through mm. clips, walking through rooms, and seeing it on people's screens. Having it be on in the break room. <laughs> I have just seen just the entirety of that film. It was unfucking avoidable. I couldn't escape it. It was everywhere, and like, there was no love for that movie. No. no. There was no love for that movie. They're defenders of the Last Jedi, but not that movie. People simped really hard for these last two Star Wars movies. Like the their defenders are just militant defenders, well, and it's what? insane. You have the most profitable franchise in the world. And you found a way to lose and money. You with destroyed it. <laughs> you basically brought it to being a video on demand. That's yeah. it. Yeah. You have no movies. It's been four years. Oh, four years? Four years since the last uh, Star Wars movie. Well, and Disney was very honest that Disney was very honest. They even redid the the Star Wars universe timeline that nothing outside of the original six movies is canon. They were very honest about yeah, that. Yeah, no, they just They did, that. I remember Which that. It doesn't really matter, I guess. Well, it matters like if, if you're you... a fan of the Star Wars universe and you know a bunch about it, and you'd be like, yeah, no, that still can't. Yeah, it is. But, I mean, like, you're a fan of Knights of the Old Republic, and the Old Republic has some of the best stories. Yeah, they're together. really good. And Disney has basically said they're either going... They've, they've hand-tied themselves. They either have to admit that they were wrong and that it is canon, or they have to rewrite the content. In order no, to make they're it- gonna re uh, reshoot the uh, uh, or or original trilogy. They're gonna do four, five, and six. Over someone will. Someone is going to. That's do, a bad idea. Yeah, someone is going to do very bad things about that. They'll do it. Uh, That's Nerd- gonna cause Nerd Rock riots. Predicted it as soon as they bought it. They're like, he's like, yeah, no, they're gonna re- They're gonna redo it. Well, even I logistically, <laughs> how would they do that with new actors? Yes. Yeah. Because, I mean, you're, Mark Hamill, I don't think Mark Hamill. Well, for all the Luke hate is and, Luca. Leia is still Leia. Chewbacca is, uh, what, are, what are the kids into nowadays? Furries or what? Furries. <laughs> yep. Han is gay. Um, <laughs> no, Han already <laughs> took a shower with Chewbacca and Han Solo, so they're already into it. Uh, I, I hate. Can, oh, I actually hate. liked Han Solo. Uh, Not light. It was fun. Oh, oh, that more movie fun Han than Solo? The other, the other Disney Star Wars movies. <laughs> that it was okay. And then they showed D- Darth Maul at the end, and then as nothing's yeah, come up from it again. There was a lot of dumb shit to <laughs> it. <laughs> and then we completely ignored that happened. <laughs> <laughs> Can I say about the Darth Maul thing real quick? And then I think we should probably move into the war room on this. 
because um, mm-hmm. we're about a, a little more than a half hour into our episode so far. Um, one thing about Darth Maul is I was incre- I was very skeptical about anything with Darth Maul uh-huh. because in the Clone Wars you had him come back with big spider legs. Yep. Well, he those got then, cut off right away, and then yeah. he got robot legs. So. And then he got robot legs. And then he started to, it started to make more sense the longer he existed. And I started to get comfortable with him existing in the uh, Star Wars universe again. But, um, but I, as far as like uh, Darth Maul goes, I, I was actually su- pleasantly surprised with where he, his story ended, I guess, with where he is currently. Uh, yeah. Sorry. Well, did you, yeah. did you watch the Rebel series? Um, I know of it. I know. I just do watched his death. Scene. Do you want me to? Do you want me to spoil yeah, it for you? Yeah, You're gonna I, watch it. I'm probably not gonna check it out. His death scene is bomb. He gets killed. Okay. So he he starts obviously the whole time in that series. He's looking for Obi Wan Kenobi to get his revenge still because he can't Obi-Wan. get over it. And so he's walking through the desert Did on you Tatooine. Shake your head, drinking water. Mm-hmm. He's that walking through. A, he's walking through the desert on Tatooine and he finds him and he's like, Obi Wan's like, I'm not gonna fight you, dude. I'm an old. Her like I'm old and you're uh, clearly still a warrior. <laughs> old and you're a cripple. You're yeah. <laughs> I, you're clearly a warrior still. There He's was, like there was a really good quote too, right uh, before they uh, cross sabers again for the last time. It was um, some about look how far you've fallen. Yeah, and Obi Wan's like, look what I've risen above or something. Yep, shit. basically. And because he's like risen above their thing, and then they have this awesome little scene where they're changing positions and lightsabers. It's very quick, it's, but it's good. It's really good. And then he get, he cuts him because he tries that move he killed Qui Gon with. Oh. You can see him try it, but Obi Wan tricks him and he cuts him and he kills him. Okay. Because um, he's like, well, we're, you're here protecting something because Obi Wan wasn't going to fight him. And he's like, protecting, protecting someone. What? So he's like, okay, someone. now I got to kill you. You figured it out. Great. Now mm. you must die. Yep. <laughs> the guy was going to just I not loved, fight you. I loved uh, really Darth good. Maul coming back in the Clone Wars. I liked it too. I liked his whole storyline. I really did too. Good. You could just, he had just so there much was, fight in him. Because cool. ever the whole fan base loved that character. And he's just like, done, dirty. done in the first movie. He's done dirty. And then I, Dave Filoni's like, eh, we'll bring him back yeah. in Clone Wars. One of these days I need to do a deep, deep dive into what the Star Wars, the prequel trilogy was supposed to be. Because my understanding was that Lucasfilms changed a lot of what the next two movies were supposed to be based on uh, pr- fan predictions and thoughts they had from huh. the original uh, from hmm. the original films. Or from the uh, Phantom Menace. Well, I know there's a lot of uh, bitching about... Uh, Senate politics in the first one, and they continued that shit. So I didn't mind that at all. I, I really didn't. I, I didn't. Well, I grew up with uh, mm. one, two, and three, so those are my favorites. You mean? Do you mean four, five, and six? Episode one, two, and three. Okay, okay, gotcha. I was just being clear. Yeah, because Darth Maul was the shit. He was awesome. And Qui Gon is awesome. How do you kill off Liam Neeson's character? And Darth Maul. Right. In the in, same episode. In the same fight. In the, in same, the same fight. fight. <laughs> it was it's like the two <laughs> best characters you ever created. It's like gone. True. I would those two characters are more iconic than Obi Wan, than Yoda. I would say they're more iconic than Darth Maul. Same. Or, no, like, no uh, Darth Vader. I would say no. they're more iconic than Darth Vader. No. Okay, Darth Not Vader's Darth Vader. Hard, hard to be, because Darth Vader It's Vader. It is the all time menace. It's the bad. It's like when you think of bad guys in franchises. Darth Vader, Vader's the Joker. One. I mean, uh, you, those you, are the you, someone you play. You play <laughs> Jedi Fallen. Ignore Order. it. <laughs> you play Jedi Fallen Order, and you watch the, like some people's reactions on YouTube. Cause yeah, when he sh- Vader shows up. YouTube's. Yeah. It's, yeah. As soon as he shows up, people are losing their shit. <laughs> Dar- <laughs> Darth seen, Vader. It's like, in, oh um, fuck! I gotta fight Vader. <laughs> yeah. Darth no, Vader in you uh, run. <laughs> yeah, Darth Vader in Rogue One, I thought was oh, really best good. scene in the whole movie. Sick. Best scene I, out of anything Disney's ever. I went done. there with a really good buddy of mine, and I, I thought I shouted this in the screen. I was like, "Kill those dirty rebels!" <laughs> and I, oh, I was so excited. <laughs> oh, I was so excited for him to get some rebels. Get them, get them now! Uh, Come on, chase them down. You could just see how like menacing he was. <laughs> the guy is like, first of all, he's like, "Let us out!" and he's like screaming, "Get us!" Yeah. <laughs> it's like you see the fear. <laughs> right. He's a badass dude. Yeah. Okay, okay. And, okay. I, will, yeah, I, I stand Rogue, corrected. Rogue I stand. One depicted him 
properly to Ill, where he for yeah. how yeah. scary he is. Well, because honestly, I th- among all new all of the um, Disney generation of Star Wars content, I personally enjoyed Rogue One. I liked it as an isolated story. So did I. I, I thought like it was the really good. Last like thirty minutes or whatever, when they're all on the planet, they all end up I dying. I like yeah. the last forty-five seconds. It was a consequential. <laughs> See, Disney doesn't know how to do consequential stories, like stories that actually matter and are actually Disney impactful. Because they're Disney. Well, they did with Rogue One, which is what I was it's saying. True. Is Rogue One is the sole exception to that, which they is did. why that was a movie I enjoyed, Com- and everything sacrifice. else didn't matter at all. Rogue One is the only star. Uh, like, uh, I mean, even even uh, in the Last Jedi, when uh, Luke Skywalker is getting blasted by one hundred Adats, it <laughs> yeah. yeah, but it was an it's like, oh, it's proje- a rejection, yeah. so he wasn't even there the yeah. whole time. Nothing in Disney freaking matters. Disney and that's is shooting. What, there's yeah, there's no sacrifice, and you're right. And Rogue One is like. Well, I it's know none sacrifice. of these. We know none of these characters are in the next movie. Nothing so. matters when it comes to Disney writing. Yes, it's all just go for a joke. Yep. Mm-hmm. So, honestly, I think we should wrap it up there because this is. Uh, I think you guys, as the audience, probably know by now what our opinion on reboots is. <laughs> so I think we've got <laughs> fuck them. Yeah, we're not fans. But we're going to move on to, I think we've come up with a title for our next uh, segment, The War Room, where we each will discuss on a weekly basis um, a specific topic and bring our own choices to the board, to the chopping block, to have them ridiculed by the other two. Just imagine <laughs> just imagine three World War II generals in a room together playing Risk. Oof. You can choose which That'd one. That'd be cool. <laughs> which... I'd watch that. Okay. Do I know that I lose at the end of this one? <laughs> like, I, who's Hitler? Who's Stalin? <laughs> who's Hitler? Stalin? Ugh. Who's Churchill? I, I appreciate that you got all three of those names right. I only would have gotten one. It was good. <laughs> um, it only happened fucking eighty years ago. I wasn't alive. Yeah. Why does it matter? <laughs> I wasn't alive three generations past that. <laughs> I only know what happened in my lifetime. I, I know <laughs> around me. I know at least that much. <laughs> Around me. Much. Anything else that happened outside of me. Doesn't matter. Yeah. So the last time we spoke, uh, we the topic we chose was movie scene. It was movie favorite scene. movie. It was uh, number one movie. Scene. The movie scene. Last time. Well, what, what I said was what we were choosing for this week. Oh, I thought what, you said week. what we discussed last week. Or last so, no, last time. It's kind of an asterisk, though, because I have 20 favorite movies. I know. I was like... That's why this is always. It. It was, yeah. it's this like, was we could tough. Do this, we could do this for. This was very tough. As the ages. audience, I want you guys to appreciate how hard it would be to pick one movie with no qualifications whatsoever yeah, and it as could, your favorite. And it can shift around from like week to week. You know, it's like all of a sudden you're like, oh, that's I thought of this movie, and it just has these certain qualities. Yeah. You that's have why a really good bowel one. movement. You're changing uh, films. Yeah, I yeah. had a favorite <laughs> exactly. movie that I was going to talk about up until last night, and I'm like. Eh, I'll talk about this movie instead. <laughs> <laughs> well, my choice for this week for number one film is a movie that has always resided at the at or near the top of my list. And it's a movie that I'm going to start off by saying I don't watch this movie even once a year. It's not a movie I rewatch a lot. But I do think that it is one of the greatest stories in tele- or in movie history ever to hit the silver screen. Now watching this trailer, though, on screen. I want to watch it. I'm really yeah, no, hyped same. to check it out again. Liam Neeson's in it, so it's got me sold. Yep. The movie is called <laughs> The Kingdom of Heaven. It's got Ava Green in it, so I'm yep. sold. Kingdom of <laughs> Heaven. So Kingdom of Heaven is a historical fiction epic um, based around the 11th century. It's where the cru- during the Crusades. Um, 1000s, and- 11th century. What's that? Uh, a little before that, or after that, wasn't it? Uh, I don't think so. Sure. Um, it's like 1108 A.D. 12th century. 12th century, yep. Well, yeah, and so the movie takes place in the 12th century during the Crusades. Um, there's a main character who's played by Orlando Bloom, and his father, uh, who he meets at the beginning of the film, is Liam Neeson. That's right. He is his father. Liam Neeson is this it's like a bastard really thing, significant yeah. noble like in, Jer- like in Jerusalem. So like he's only a couple tiers he's like a beneath baron. the king. Yeah, he's mm-hmm. a baron. So he's really, really well respected. Very significant. He commands armies, and he's looking for his bastard son, and he finds 
Balian, the uh, Orlando Bloom's character, um, out in the country, out in a different country as a, and he's living his life in as a blacksmith. In France, as a blacksmith. Yep. And so, <laughs> see, s- I can add a lot to this movie because this is one of my favorite movies of all time. It too. really <laughs> is. The vast majority of this film takes place in and around Jerusalem, and the story is Balian, Orlando Bloom's character. Coming up as a knight and taking on a role, his father's role as uh, the Baron of Ebelin, and he he's uh, the king winds up passing away from leprosy, the king of Jerusalem, and he. God, you're already like three hours into the movie. Yeah, and he. <laughs> well, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna recite the whole like synopsis of the movie. I'm just and gonna give then... a. <laughs> So, Balian, the main character, finds himself defending the city against the Saracens. Uh, and jeez. Oh, and there's a lot of... Uh, are you going to interrupt every sentence I say <laughs> or just half of them? Half. Okay. Making sure I understand it. All right. One. I'm going to pause there for a <laughs> second. Just to... But the, uh, the reason I like this movie so much is because the acting in it is phenomenal. Amazing actors. The story is... Really good. And, I mean, most of the reviews, and, I mean, these are, like, reviews written today even. They're all saying Ridley Scott did a really good job portraying all of the different cultures in a good faith uh, in a good faith way uh, during this film. So, you know, you have a lot of different spoken languages, a lot of different cultures, and Ridley Scott did a good job of representing all of them. And the action scenes are amazing. And... All the different characters have... You could do a character study on several of these characters in this in this movie. Um, the love interest in this story is actually the... Um, the Hottest si- chick alive. Uh, yeah, Ava Green. <laughs> I love her. And she's actually the <laughs> sister of the king. And so Balian oh. is given the opportunity to become the king of Jerusalem. And he turns it down because it would mean that his like rival would be murdered for, uh, for a bunch of... like evil acts that he had performed but he didn't want to be the cause of of yeah so he felt this moral (laughs) conflict he he put himself in the position to be just a completely moral character just unbreakable like ethics which caused a lot of additional conflict and a lot of people to die so the moral of the story is if you feel morally conflicted go with the path that causes the least amount of people to die there, I guess. there is an asterisk to this. It's Kingdom of Heaven, the director's cut. Yeah, that is actually true. My movie choice is qualified exclusively by the fact that I am talking about the director's cut and not the theatrical cut. Theatrical cut is good? Nowhere near as good as director's cut. Well, and the theatrical cut got like If you got sixes. three and a half hours. Well, and the, you can watch uh-huh. a six-minute overture in the beginning. Yeah, well, this, the theatrical uh, was getting like six to seven for reviews. And I thought it deserved way better than that. But the um, the director's cut is deserving of a much higher rating. This, and, this is all also 05. Yeah. To where it was very close to 9-11. And people were kind of just like, uh, hey, maybe don't uh, make movies where the Muslims are the bad guys. And he didn't. This Well, isn't... no. The Muslims are portrayed rather well yeah they did it it's like hey we both want our holy city yep and we're fighting over it that's basically what it was and the um i actually looked at like how this movie performed it made money and this was at a time where it's like the only movies it was going up against were uh kicking and screaming the will ferrell will ferrell movie that (laughs) was my goodness soccer one yeah kicking and screaming with will ferrell that That movie's that old that came out the same weekend as this one there's Kingdom of Heaven is my choice. It's almost 20 years old. So, that's my choice. Um, I'm old. Who wants to Who wants to go next? I can't. Can, do I, it. can I vote for your movie? That's f- you. Yeah. <laughs> well, well the, at the end of this, the audience is going to get the option to choose. Because I, and, I so, like every movie we're talking about. Yeah. I adore every movie we're talking yeah. about. So, Slim, why don't you jump um, in with with your choice? You know. Fortunately, I don't got to go through this whole movie like he did because everyone's watched my movie. Uh, <laughs> but That's true. That's true. So I picked uh, I Batman. I won't make you guys suffer through <laughs> yeah, the monologue. Through 20-minute monologue. Um, yeah, I picked uh, um, The Dark Knight mostly because <laughs> of um, Heath Ledger's performance. Oh, my goodness. Yes. It's iconic. I mean, everyone, every time you 
you know, obviously there's other good jokers, but every time a new joker comes there's out no now, he's other the good best. jokers. Who do they compare? And he's been great in relative everything to he's Heath ever Ledger. He, relative to Heath Ledger, there's no other good jokers. It's just, it's just Relatively, his performance. Yeah, it's you never know what he's gonna do, and and it, that's why it puts you on edge as the person watching between he's when he's unpredictable. It's so unpredictable between when he's in that um, that top room, like with all the people in the banquet, and he's like. Just like, just tell me where. I heard a lot of that was improvised. Yeah, it's yep, creepy. To where he's like creeping the fuck out of yes. Michael Caine, and like he grabs um, what's her name? Michelle John Hall, which would be what? Not Michelle. Rachel. Hey. Rachel. I don't know, <laughs> I like John her Hall. name in it. Um, Rachel. He he wasn't scripted to grab her, and so he grabs her face, and she's like trying to get away from him. I'm like, oh, it's like. It would be creepy, so yeah. yeah and that asshole uh, Jared Leto tried to like uh, try to be Heath Ledger when he portrayed the Joker yeah. in Suicide Squad. He's like sending condoms and shit out to his he, fellow it's, castmates. It's yeah, like, oh, it's, I don't know. That's stop. Yeah, yeah. and, and just so with too hard. well, with Jared Leto was a. I have I have nothing good to say about Jared Leto. As no, Joker. I don't either. I think that was huge. As Joker, no. But as an actor, he's good. Yeah, he's fine, and he's 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 fine. But I mean, as Joker, bad casting choice, really bad. And honestly, I think it was bad writing. Like, I don't blame Jared Leto for uh, the entirety of, of his lot performance. Of, a lot of studio interference. But anyway, Ton. back to Dark Knight. And uh, I just I don't think talking about like casting choice. I don't think obviously I know some people could have maybe done it better, but I liked almost every single person, except for maybe the Scarecrow. In this, you don't in the like casting. Killian Murphy oh, as a no. scarecrow. Oh, no. I, I think he did a good job. I, I was will just fight you right now. <laughs> I was just looking at Jimmy the rest Mike of them. Stop! Like, we're gonna. Fight. No, we're not fighting. <laughs> Sit down. No, uh, but um, I, I just think all the casting choices were very good. Alfred, you know, er, everyone. I think they all did a very well, good I job. Mean, you got Christian Bell. You got uh, Heath Ledger. Heath Ledger. Aaron you Eckert. got uh, Michael Caine. Yep. Uh, Jar- uh, Gordon. Gary Oldman. Gary Oldman. As Gordon, Morgan very Freeman, good. Morgan Freeman, Killian Murphy. It's insane. Aaron it Eckhart as fucking Two Face, and he yep. has the most Nailed quotable it. line of all time, to where it's like, uh, "Heads or tails." No, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, heads or tails. Uh, <laughs> Everyone says that shit. Uh, no, it's uh, oh, what the fuck? How's it go? Cool. Some, some, some. Live long you, enough to see yourself become. You see oh yourself yeah! Long enough to become the villain. You either die you, the hero. You either you die, die a hero. Or live or long enough to yeah. see yourself become the villain. And it's, it's actually most true to life fucking uh, sentence I've ever heard. Yep. I think yeah. I uh, honestly, when you told me this was your choice, I had it's, I was afraid for mine. <laughs> well, <laughs> like this well, one, you know you what? Know, I, this I, movie I think is in the top five of M- IMBD. It's very good, and it's then really like close. you, I've seen some like backstory about like so. so like subtle stuff the Joker did. I don't know if you guys ever watched this part of it, but there was a scene where the Joker goes in to see Harvey when he gets everyone out of the hospital and he gives him the gun. He's like, here's your choice. You can shoot me kind of thing, you know? Oh, but yeah, he's yeah. holding his finger on the hammer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you watch, rewatch it. There's a breakdown because it's like, yeah. He's giving them the illusion of choice. Right. But Joker, if you watch a Joker, has got his finger on the hammer. So even if he did pull the trigger, he went to shot him. Oh my God. And it's like, oh, I didn't even see that. So it's like, the, the director can just add the subtle stuff. Nuance. And it's so good. It's fun. Yeah, this movie got 94, 94 across <laughs> the board. Yeah. 94% Pretty in good. Rotten Tomatoes and audience, audience. score uh, by Rotten Tomatoes. I mean, yeah, this movie, if we're talking just reviews and feedback, mm-hmm. it's not even close between like my movie choice and The Dark Knight. And I think... Everyone here understands why. It's Heath Ledger's performance it's Heath Ledger's is so performance. iconic that it literally shatters all interpretations of what his character ever was or ever yep. will be. Yep. And he will always be one of the gold standards in acting. For sure. Now, uh, any, I mean, anything else you want to add to your uh, to your choice, uh, Slim? Nope. That's all I got for it. Well, good pitch. I mean, like I said, <laughs> it's, I'll, 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 I'll ruin it if I say anything else. To both ears, it's like, yeah, movie's fucking now we great. Get, <laughs> now we get to shit on yours. <laughs> Mel Gibson, the psycho. All right, all right, all right. No. <laughs> all right, all right, all right, all right. Do you love America? I am medium about Cage. it. No, I'm just kidding. Yes. Do you love America? 
Yes. Okay. Case my movie closed. Is, my movie is Get Rich or Die Trying, the Donald Trump story. <laughs> <laughs> JK, it's the Patriot, Mel mm-hmm. Gibson. Hell I yeah. mean, how how can you even argue against this? Except for it might not be uh, totally historically accurate. Uh, we don't need that. How? Though. I mean, as long as it's good. I mean, it's the fucking colonies rising up, destroying Britain, uh, taking it to them I mean, British, well, <laughs> taking it to the man, I mean, redcoats. Let's be real here. Only one movie hit here in our choices is historically accurate, and it slims. <laughs> <laughs> we all remember Dark that Rises happening. Is the most historically accurate. I'm Batman. Uh, <laughs> uh, no. But I mean, you got Golden Age Mel Gibson. Yeah. And you got. Uh, well, we just talked about Golden Boy Heath Ledger. In his, mm. in, when he was, so Heath Ledger, I would say that his Ruled best performances, well, I would say his best performances were later, his best movies were earlier. I would say that, like, I would put up, like, A Knight's Tale is, That's is good. Yeah, I almost thought. just switched Great. to the last second to talking about A Knight's Tale. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Talk but it I was, in there, different movie. But my, it's such a good movie. But I do think that Heath Ledger is is awesome, and I do think that his performance in The Patriot is amazing. Absolutely. Yeah, it's about this dude that fought in the French uh, in Indian War, did some shit at Fort Wilderness, wilderness that they won't fucking talk about until uh, Later, almost towards three. the end of the movie before uh, Heath Ledger dies. Third act oh, for sure. Sorry, spoilers. <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, spoilers. it's just a dude with a fuck load of kids his wife oh his wife is dead yeah he had like and he's five no, six kids right a yeah lot. somewhere up there i don't know you can count them fucking all but uh yeah no it's about to do with the fuck load of kids he's lost his wife uh he's a hero of fort wilderness and uh there's at the beginning of the movie there's uh that meeting about uh hey what the fuck do we do about england and he's like uh He's again avidly against war I'm with out. England. I'm nope. Yeah, I I'm a parent. I don't have uh, the luxury. The luxury of um, principles. Principles. Thank you, Jamie. I I know I know things. <laughs> I'm sober and I know things. I'm <laughs> sober. <and> <laughs> <laughs> That's the opposite of Tyrion Lannister. <clears throat> but Not- as war, as uh, shit goes to shit, his son. Uh, Enlists, enlists in the Continental Army, fights against the British. He ends up uh, with, uh, yeah, no, there was a battle with uh, close to their house, right? Yep, there was a battle outside their home. Battle and outside their home, and he's coming in. He's a dispatch rider. Yep. Uh, delivering uh, orders, I guess, to the Continental Army. And it all kind of turns to shit there. And that's kind of where the uh, the accuracy goes a little out the window. The historical accuracy. Mm-hmm. It's like the British weren't really that brutal towards like well, fire the house and barn, kill them all. Well, <laughs> yeah, it was. Uh, I mean, it was dispatch rider. You can't uh, hang him or whatever. He's basically don't kill the messenger. It's yeah, like, he's a spy. Hang him. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> yeah, I I think that this movie definitely um, deserves a top tier. I think. Even among Mel Gibson's like overall performances, I mean, this is his best. I I will say best. I I still say Braveheart. That was a good movie. I rewatched that. I still long ago. say Braveheart is better. I think Patriot stomps the shit out of Braveheart. I think you're just patriotic for the wrong country. Like Scotland. Do you love America? I love Scotland. <laughs> then vote for this movie. If you love Scotland, <laughs> vote for Braveheart. <laughs> <laughs> No, but I do. If you hit America, go for this fucking French bitch with his crusades. You can just get it. <laughs> if you hit America, you can go be French. <laughs> but no, it's that's like, your two uh, options. This guy's, this guy's sons constantly get killed throughout the movie, and he's just a step too far to win Gabriel Heath Ledger's character dies. Because of course, everyone loses their mind when Heath Ledger dies. Slim, when was the last uh, time you've seen this movie? The Patriot? Yeah. It was a long time ago. Do you remember the scene when they're on the shore? Like, the, the they, they're they basically all refugees, and they go hide among, like, the slave... This is when like, his daughter finally group. talks to him. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. His, his daughter doesn't speak throughout the movie, and then in the third his act, right one. before... Yeah, his youngest daughter. Um, and then in the third act, right before he's about to go off to his final fight, his daughter speaks to him, calls out for him when he's leaving, 
And that scene, Papa! that scene breaks hearts, dude. <laughs> that scene is way sadder than the Notebook. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's yeah, cause uh, what do you want? <laughs> what do you, <laughs> Papa? Because he he Ledger's character visits uh, her before, and she's like uh, basically asking about dad, and is like, I hope I never see him again. He left us. Go. F- he can go fuck himself. Mm-hmm. He yeah, she's got a mouth on her for a four-year-old. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's verbatim. <laughs> line for line. And, she, and uh, Heath Ledger's character, uh, Gabriel, which is uh, Mel Gibson's son, <sighs> lies to him when he goes up to me. And he's like, yeah, I know. And she spoke. And he's like, how <clears> much <throat> she misses him and blah, blah, blah. Yeah. But then I've rewatched it so many times. And I think uh, Mel Gibson's character, what the fuck is his actual name in the Benjamin. Benjamin. Benjamin and Martin. I know so many useless pieces of information. Yeah, oh, me too. <laughs> uh, and by the end of the conversation, you can almost get the hint to where it's like, I think he's fucking lying to me about it. <laughs> right. <laughs> but it's just like subtleties like that too. It's Oof. Um, and I will just say Benjamin loved it. nothing to do with this the entire time. He only wanted to protect his son. It was all about his son. And when his son died, uh, he picked up uh, his flag that he was working on. It's like, all right, now it's about this. Maybe, maybe we can do it for a be- uh, bigger reason. I will say one thing before stay the course. The <laughs> uh, Rotten Tomatoes has the Patriot at a sixty-two with an audience score it, of eighty-one. It just shows what Rotten Tomatoes knows. Yeah, they know obviously nothing. They um, obviously know nothing. And fucking I, American critics don't like America. I know, I know. Bunch of commies. <laughs> Have you been alive for the last six years? Rotten Tomato, were they grown in the Soviet Union? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Got them. Uh, <yeah. laughs> <laughs> Let me check Kingdom of Heaven. Oh, oh. and you got that scene with uh, General Cornwallis. That was a good scene. Or ben- Benjamin and Cornwallis they meet, hate up, meet up again. Oh, yeah. The critics hate the Kingdom of Heaven. Um... I, and well, I've read a lot of these. I've read a lot of these reviews. Most of them are around Orlando Bloom's performance because his character was very stoic and very reserved. And so they're like, he doesn't have a personality. Yeah, it's like, dude, his oh. wife just died and yeah. child. Yeah, spoiler. Or, no, I'm just kidding. It happens in the first five <laughs> yeah, seconds of the movie. Um, but yeah, Orlando Bloom is awesome he's in a this good actor. Film. I, I think he's great in this movie. I really I don't want to say he's a good actor. He's good in this movie. Yeah. He's he's good in Pirates of the Caribbean. Yeah, for what that movie is, he absolutely the is. The first three are awesome. Yeah, and I think he d- he's a big Thank part of that. Thank you. What? Because no one says two or three is good. I like, I all, like all the first three. I like the first three. Really. I like them a lot. I like the trilogy. I like so the I. Um, one and three, but the second one I didn't even need to happen. Second one didn't. Have I think to it did. Oh, he's I like all trying three. to be controversial. Well, Barbosa comes back in the second movie, but he could have come back in the third movie. Well, and he's barely in the second one. It's the, the last ten seconds. Well, right? Okay, he hold just on, hold comes on, in on. at the end. Hold on, just what are you bitching out. about? Me out. <laughs> what happened in the second movie that is of narrative significance? All right, fuck these three movies. We're talking about pirates now. That's Let's what I'm go. <laughs> all right. We're gonna stop there before I get my butt whooped. <laughs> no, um, I do want to. I do. Want, we're gonna next, have a, next time. We'll talk about pirates. Well, we got. <laughs> it's just not even pick one. It's like, all right, Jimmy, you're fucking wrong about pirates. How about next week we do our favorite uh, trilogy? Okay. Next week. We oh, do. that's impossible. We all know who's number one. Me. Star Wars. Yeah, uh, no. Oh, you. you're you're wrong. Uh. Uh-uh. uh No, Lord of the Rings is obviously oh, the best yeah. trilogy. Yeah. Never mind. I I I call dibs. <laughs> like, dibs. Like, you can have your Pirates of the Caribbean and then we can have it out. Perfect. I'm gonna call a trilogy about some uh what's uh what do you call uh it's not Hollywood Bollywood. Some Bollywood movie. <laughs> <laughs> like something out of nowhere. <laughs> then <laughs> Alright guys. We are gonna wrap it up there. This has been a great episode of the third party podcast, and we are finishing out of the out of the war room. Um if you made it this far, please leave a comment and let us know which of the three movies you think was the best choice and uh feel free to comment why you think it was kingdom of heaven um <laughs> yeah, if you don't like america you can get out <laughs> leave a like on the video subscribe to the channel and share the podcast around with your friends and family let them know that we are going to be doing this and hopefully we'll see you guys on the next episode peace peace <laughs>